The main skill I want to teach you this semester is how to write an organized and persuasive essay. This skill will serve you in all of your humanities and, and even other classes as you continue on in college. The way we do that is by structuring the essay in a certain predictable way, which is the way I've been teaching you, and starts off with a three-part introduction. The introduction begins with a hook, moves on to background information, and ends with a thesis. This essay is one written by um, your classmate. It's an it's a essay for the second assignment, and um, Matthew did a great job. He got an A. There's one comment I gave him, room for improvement. He should have framed his quote. So even when you use a direct quote as a hook, you should introduce it and comment it. You should introduce and comment every single direct quote you use in your entire essay. In every other way, his essay was exemplary. And I want to show you how it's structured because he, he did a great job with that. Here's his thesis. I highlighted it, and I numbered the points. So if you see, um, his first point is about how um, it's important to identify the human connection to nature. That's his first point. His second point is about um, how the media um, reports on sustainability in a dis disingenuous fashion. And his third point is how we need to look for re reputable science-based information so we can better protect the future. I'll pause here to say, to remind you to either print or download to your desktop the prompt for the S for any essay you're working on. As you're working on it, you should refer to the prompt multiple times. And um, Matthew did this. Actually, we worked together in my office a little bit and did some of this. Um, so notice he he responded to the third prompt, which asks um, you asked you to create a definition of sustainability. Sustainability, summarize the importance of information in the big sustainability picture, and make one specific suggestion for how information might be used. Matthew followed that prompt to the T, and he also did it in, in this very highly conventional structure, which is the structure that, um, that your professors will, will want to see because it keeps... It keeps everyone organized, basically. So you see point number one, point number two, point number three. So here we go. First body paragraph. In the first sentence, he claims that same point he made in his thesis that sustainability should be defined in a way that connects humans to nature. And there it is, right in that first sentence. So that's called a topic sentence. And the rest of the paragraph is on this topic. This paragraph has one topic, and that's it, how... It helps to have a definition of sustainability that connects humans to nature. And he, his source in there is David Suzuki. He explains David Suzuki's idea, and he analyzes it a little bit down here. His second point is that the media presents the sustainability topic in a disingenuous way. And for that, he uses Al Gore. He's, he also has this, this topic sentence as the first sentence of his body paragraph, and his entire body paragraph is on on that topic with evidence which is summary of Al Gore's argument and some analysis at the end and his third point was how we sh we need good scientific information to help us move constructively into the future right that's what the prompt asked him to do and that's what he did and he's got a topic sentence at the beginning of that paragraph on the topic of what kind of information you know how we need to find good information um, and that whole paragraph is about that topic. He uses uh, Meadows, Randers Meadows as his source there. He actually has two paragraphs on that third topic, which is perfectly legitimate. He has topic sentences in both of them. And they're both uh, completely focused on that one on that one topic. So this is a really great essay. I want to show you Jennifer's essay too, because hers is a really good essay, but it's not quite as straightforwardly organized um, in a way here's the deal when you become a more skilled um, writer and and have that that strict college essay format down you you can kind of some of those rules can kind of fall away because you know how to keep yourself organized 
So Jennifer's essay is an example of um, of this. She she has well she has a, she has a great hook. It's a personal story which is always appropriate and super engaging. She has background information where she introduces her source articles and she ends her very long introduction, which is fine, with this three-part thesis. But as you can see, she doesn't, um, I've numbered them in the order in which they appear in the body paragraphs, and she doesn't um, attack them in the sequence that they're listed in, their the in her thesis, um, nor does she have topic sentences. Um, so the first point she handles is this one that, the authors argue that we must be open-minded to move sustainably into the future. Oh, by the way, she her she was following prompt option number one. Um, and notice the word open-minded doesn't even appear till toward the end of the paragraph, but it's okay because the entire paragraph is is focused on that topic strictly, which is the important part. So a, a topic sentence is really to keep you and your reader on the same page and organized, but when you kind of graduate and have that structure down, you don't really need the topic sentence anymore because you're going to keep everything organized without it. All right, so the authors argue that we must be scientific. That's her second point. That's her second body paragraph. Um, and she, this one does sort of have a topic sentence that, that states the focus, but the point is that that whole body paragraph is strictly focused on that topic. And then her third body paragraph is on the practice of her community, which she, she mentions down here, but she does not have a topic sentence saying, my community practices sustainable, the sustainable um, thing. And um, anyway, okay, so, so that's, that's it.